Millions of people die every year due to a lack of nonverbal self-assessment. I'm just kidding, but it's pretty important. Hi, my name is Kyle Nelson, and today I'll be talking about the implications of nonverbal audio cues on the quality of a relationship. According to the research article, nonverbal auditory cues allow research quality to be inferred during conversations. Published in the Journal of Nonverbal Behavior, the quality of a relationship can be deciphered mostly by way of nonverbal communication, further reinforcing the Moravian conjecture, which is the idea that 90% of all communication is relayed through nonverbal channels. In this presentation, I plan to first summarize a peer reviewed research article on the subject of nonverbal communication, second, discuss its findings, and finally, express its implications through a personal anecdote of interpersonal communication. To provide context, the research article in which I'm talking about aims to assess the extent to which somatic and prosodic information is required for listeners to identify the quality of a relationship throughout a conversation. To clarify, somatic information can be defined as the literal meaning of the message, while prosodic information can be understood as the way sound is presented. To expand, the research provides the listeners with three audio clips of natural conversation, one of which is unaltered. The second is the version of a clip which is delexicalized, which means it's encrypting the message where the audio is unable to be understood, but it preserves the prosodics. Lastly, it plays a clip of pure pitch, which removes the prosodic information. In connection to Communication 121, this article touches on subjects from Chapter 2, which is Nonverbal Communication, Chapter 4's Communication Styles, and Chapter 9's Point on Recognizing an Excited State of Emotions in a Conflict. Applying the knowledge from this class to the research on understanding vocalics, it can be applied to understand the quality of a relationship in a conversation. Thus, this allows you the ability to alter your vocalics to better relay your message. The research aims to evaluate three hypotheses. First, if verbal context is paramount, the relationship quality should be only inferred accurately with the full audio clip. Otherwise, nonverbal elements are important. Secondly, if the nonverbal cues are significant, performance is expected to rank in the order from highest to lowest performance, full audio, delexicalized clip, then the peer pitched. Thirdly, if verbal context is crucial, the performance is generally expected to be better when listening to one's own language. The findings turn out quite interesting, though. The research suggests that nonverbal cues of con the research suggests that nonverbal cues of conversational exchanges provide significant information about the quality of a relationship. And there's benefit from having enhanced prosodic richness and explicit verbal information. Additionally, on delexicalized clips, on average, participants performed at 80% the accuracy of the full clips. This suggests that the verbal content only provides 20% more value. Another cool additional finding of this study was that English and Spanish speakers actually were equally as accurate on each other's clips as their own language. In application, I chose to focus on conflict resolution between me and my roommate and long-term best friend. Generally speaking, she's a little more reserved, utilizing a non-assertive communication style most of the time. Because of this, she doesn't relay her needs through verbal communication until they build up and become problematic enough to where she believes they need to be conveyed. I noticed that in order to to improve my communication and conflict resolution with her, I needed to focus on my verbal, my nonverbal communication awareness for this research project. By reading through and understanding the implications of this article, I feel more confident focusing on nonverbal channels over verbal ones and understanding the quality of our communication. With this in mind, I'm able to alter my nonverbal communication and be more aware of hers to facilitate better conflict resolution. To reiterate, the research I studied found that relationships quali relationship quality can be determined primarily through the implications of nonverbal vo vocalics, suggesting its importance over verbal communication. 
Hopefully the implications of this article and the application within my relationship with my roommate help you understand the importance of nonverbal communication and how it can be used in your favor when relaying a message. Thank you for your time and attention.